coming, everybody, today. This is Christiana Katsoulos, uh, and she's going to be presenting. Uh, her presentation is on an experimental study on drag reduction aftermarket, of aftermarket additions on SUV. All right, well, thank you all for coming today. Um, I, like as she said, I'll be um, giving a presentation on experimental study on drag reduction of aftermarket additions on an SUV. So first I'll give you some background on the project as well as the features that I designed um, as well as measurements that I um, calculated and the test, a short video on the testing process, my final results and why you should invest in these aerodynamic um, additions and opportunities for future work. So the story behind my project began when I was born in Warrington, Virginia, and my parents and I lived in the countryside where there were very rural roads, and it, like it was gravel roads everywhere. So SUVs were just like the practical choice for us instead of sedans. Um, however, my parents were commuting to work in Northern Virginia, which was like over an hour away, and they realized they were paying for premium gas almost weekly. It was extremely inefficient. And so I heard the story later on in life and realized, you know, why couldn't I try to um, develop a way to reduce drag and therefore improve fuel efficiency and save my parents money on gas down the road. So if you don't know what drag force is, it is the air resistance on an object, or in this case, a vehicle. So the more streamlined the vehicle, the more aerodynamic it is. In the second image, you see how the sedan has more smooth streamlines, meaning it's more aerodynamic. However, with the truck, it's a more blunt-shaped object, causing the streamlines to be less smooth, and meaning it has more drag and is less aerodynamic. So originally, I wanted to 3D print the model SUV, but due to a variety of factors, I ended up purchasing a 2006 Range Rover Sport, as you can see right here. And um, that is about a 1 to 18 scale to the <coughs> actual model SUV. So the features were made from uh, oven baked clay as well as 3D printing. And sticky tack was used to attach those features to the model so that it served for easy removal process as well as combining the features um, onto the model SUV. So now I'm going to go over the features that I um, tested with. First is the all air dams, which includes the front, sides, and back air dam. And here's an image of the first two trials of the front air dams with clay. Um, so unfortunately, the clay didn't really mold well to the front of the vehicle. And I ended up 3D printing the front air dam, and it was attached using oven baked clay. Um, this just created a more smoother surface, if you can kind of see on the side, um, to see if that would reduce drag at all. Um, the next set of pictures show the side air dams, back air dam, and wheel covers. Those were all made from clay. <coughs> the third feature was the full underbody coverage. Originally, I tried to uh, make it out of clay, but it didn't mold well to the bottom of the vehicle, so I ended up 3D printing it. And after a second try, um, this underbody coverage was created, and it includes all air dams, so the front, the sides, and the back air dams. And this front air dam was detached so that I could use it as an individual feature like you just saw on the previous slide. The last feature were the fairings. Now I used this second set of fairings um, just because they were a little bit more angled and thinner than the uh, first try in the gray. And if you don't know what fairings are, they're this wing-like paneling that comes off the back of 18-wheeler trucks. Um, you might have seen that driving on the highway to get to JMU today. And so my thought was, why can't I try to develop some kind of wing-like structure to come off the back of an SUV and see if that can reduce the drag on the vehicle. So this is the wind tunnel located at JMU. Um, this is the wind tunnel test section where the model was mounted. And this is a large garage door that was open to allow airflow to move um, in and out of the wind tunnel. The wind tunnel speed is measured in hertz, and that's uh, the max capabilities is about one, 102 miles per hour. So some measurements that I took throughout the testing process include air temperature and pressure to measure the air density in the wind tunnel. Also pressure difference was measured using a, a pedostatic tube connected to two manometers, a, a digital and u inclined manometer, and Bernoulli's equation was broken down in order to use pressure to find air velocity. 
And that's how I could relate the hertz that the wind tunnel me speed is measured in to air velocity in miles per hour. The last measurement was drag, and that was measured using a dynamometer attached to a voltmeter and oscilloscope, both measuring drag voltage. And so uh, the dynamometer was calibrated to relate mass and voltage in order to obtain this trend line and slope that was used to find drag force. Once drag force was found, I was able to calculate the drag coefficient, which allowed me to, to relate all of the features and combinations to the SUV with no features. So a little bit about drag coefficients. Currently, the most aerodynamic car in the world is a Volkswagen XL1 at 0.19 drag coefficient. <coughs> the runner-up is the Tesla Model 3 at 0.21. And a standard sedan has a drag coefficient about 0.2 to 0.36, and an SUV has about 0.36 to 0.48. Now, when I did research to find the published drag coefficient for this model, the 2006 Range Rover Sport, it came out to be 0.37. So that is at the lower range of the, for a standard SUV. Unfortunately, when I was doing my testing to see what the drag coefficient was of my model, it came out to be 0.69, and that was very surprising because you would think that the drag coefficient should be the same since it's the same car, regardless of the size. <laughs> now, some reasons why that the model could have had this difference in drag coefficient could be that the model wasn't an exact replica of the actual SUV. The materials that were made to go into making this could be slightly different from what um, the actual Range Rover Sport would um, be like. Also, both the actual and model SUV should be dynamically similar, meaning that the model SUV sh and the actual SUV should have um, the same Reynolds number and drag coefficient. However, the model would have had to be tested at supersonic speeds for that to occur. Therefore, I was forced to use the speeds available at the, with the JMU wind tunnel, which could have caused the drag coefficient to be slightly different, as you can see here. So now I'm going to show you a short video on the testing process so you can get a glimpse of what I saw when I was conducting my um, tests. All right, so first you see the digital and u incline manometers, and so that's what I use to measure pressure in the wind tunnel, and that's measured in kilopascals. This is quickly the pedostatic tube. Uh, this is the model in the, mounted in the wind tunnel test section to the dynamometer. And this is the wind tunnel blower controller, and that's set to uh, 60 hertz, which is the max um, speed that I was able to test at. And lastly, this is the voltmeter and oscilloscope, both measuring drag voltage. And right here, the V average value should be approximately the same as the voltmeter readings above. So a major issue that occurred throughout my entire testing process was that at around 10 miles per hour, the drag coefficient had a serious spike um, uh, for all three trials of all feature tests. And then it, it leveled out between like 23 to 71 miles per hour. Um, and so due to this, um, this phenomenon that was occurring, I only averaged drag coefficients from that 23 to 71 miles per hour and excluded this spike in the data. Smoke flow visualization was done in order to see if there were any strange patterns that occurred in the streamlined flow. So in this video, you see how smoke is moving around the vehicle above and below, but there isn't any like strange spike in the airflow. Um, and after careful review of video footage from speed zero to 28 miles per hour, it was clear that this spike um, still occurred regardless of what it looked like in the high speed camera videos. This led me to try additional testing. So I used a smooth sphere as well as a metal boat shaped block instead of the model SUV to see if they also provided the same spike in data. The result, it still had that res the spike in the data and led me to believe that this phenomenon was not associated with the model itself, but it could be an issue with the dynamometer and some mechanism within it getting stuck at lower speeds at about 10 miles per hour. So an overview of the results, I tested four main features, the air dams, wheel covers, full underbody coverage, and fairings. And I did about 17 different combinations over a period of about 56 hours of, 
experimental testing. So this is a general overview of my data results for drag reduction. Um, as you can see in the yellow here, this is the SUV with no features, and that's a drag coefficient of 0.69. So if you look at all of these other bars, all of the features reduce drag even just a little bit, like you can see at the top here. Um, and the best reducers were the all air dams and front and side air dams, and the least reducer was the back air dam. So to break it down a little bit easier for you to see the drag reductions, this is the car at 0.69 drag coefficient. And like I just said, the most uh, drag reduction were the two in orange right here, the air dams, all air dams, and front and side air dams. The runner up was the full <coughs> underbody coverage as well as the addition of wheel covers at eight, about 18% drag reduction. And the least reducer of drag was the back air dam at about 1%. So the model SUV did not come with front mirror, like, I mean, front windows. As you can see, that metal makeshift windows were made to cover those openings. But I wanted to see if, lo like, getting rid of those windows, like lowering <coughs> your car windows, would reduce drag at all. And it seemed that by taking those windows off, the drag increased by almost 5%. And that confirmed my, the notion that the more, the, when you lower your windows, the aerodynamic drag caused um, by lowering your windows at higher speeds is actually worse fuel efficiency wise than using your air conditioning. But at lower speeds, lowering your windows is actually better for you fuel efficiency um, in, uh, other, other than using your air conditioning. So at low speeds, Lower your windows, high speeds, use your air conditioning. So why should you invest? Basically, as a consumer, you um, would be reducing your drag and that improves fuel efficiency. So you would be saving money on your gasoline um, down the road. So the miles per gallon savings for the best feature combination at about 19.3%, so that's the all air dams, would be almost $300 saved annually. And that was done by uh, using the price per gallon for premium gasoline, as well as driving 12,000 miles per year. And so the highway miles per gallon for the 2006 Range Rover Sport would go from 19 to about 22.7 miles per gallon. Now, if you value the all air dams at about $200, you would still save almost $90 your first year since buying the features, and then keep saving about $291 each subsequent year. So it might not seem like a lot of savings when you're at the pump, but long term, over a year, about $300 is a good amount of savings that can go towards something else. Now, all of these features are available in the automotive market today. They just aren't formally utilized by the public at large or car companies. Now, I created the idea that there could be some sort of aftermarket eco package where specific companies could make feature combinations that are tailor-made for their vehicles. So you could go to your spe specific dealership and um, get the features that you want for your vehicle that could reduce drag and improve your fuel efficiency. So some marketing incentives for um, the features that I created would, could be wheel covers with designs on them, kind of like you've seen on the back of Jeep and Land Rover spare tires. Um, the designs could um, be used as an alternative to having you know, nice rims, because some people like to buy specific rims for their vehicles. This would still serve as a nice aesthetic as well as a functional purpose for reducing drag. Also, the side air dams could double as a foot stepper. It could be a deployable foot stepper that would rotate into a side air dam, so it could serve a dual purpose. And lastly, the fairings could be collapsible onto the back of the SUV. Like you see in this photo, the fairings just simply come off the back right here, and they could collapse onto the back windshield in order to um, like prevent people from backing into your car and ruining the fairings and then you could reopening, reopen them uh, before driving. And finally, opportunities for future work. More experimentation would always be necessary in order to have um, more appropriate data to show as well as do, trying different surface roughnesses of the features because perhaps the surface roughness could affect um, the features and how the drag is reduced or not trying an alternative vehicle. 
such as these three here. The first two are a little more boxy, but the last one is somewhat curved. So that leads me to believe that the features that I created would have to look slightly different in all of these vehicles, and they would also perform um, very differently among the three. And finally, additional features. Perhaps trying a underbody coverage without the air dams would be an interesting um, feature to test, as well as more aerodynamic side view mirrors. Now, side view mirrors are actually pretty um, bad like drag increasers, so trying new designs for those would be something interesting to try. And so finally, thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate everyone for helping me throughout this capstone process, especially Dr. Altai for supporting me through everything and pushing me through all the tough times. Uh, also Mark Showalter and John Wilde for allowing me access to their labs. Um, they really helped me a lot throughout the testing process. Also the National Science Foundation for supporting the Advanced Thermo Fluids Lab. Um, without their support, couldn't have done this project. And the JME Machine Shop for making literally anything I ever needed for this project. They were really helpful with all of that. Jenna Altai for making most of those clay features since I didn't really know how to work with clay quite yet. And lastly, my friends and family who have heard me talk about this project day and night and still love me. I couldn't have done this without you, so thank you. Yes. Uh, I know it wasn't the focus of your project, but um, did you find uh, the speed at where, uh, with your windows down, like the speed of when to have your windows up and when to have your windows down? Well, I did an average of drag coefficients from about like 20 to 70 miles per hour. So that's what that 5% increase is. So I, assuming like if you're going above 20 miles per hour, lowering your windows will increase it by about 5%. Yeah. Yes. To add to that. Okay. Um, if you want to do it at, I mean, those numbers is for the test section. It's not the actual on the highway. If you look on the highway, as you said, I mentioned that you have to have a super solid speed to have dynamic similarity. So these numbers, they're not actually the one on the highway. Sure. Yeah. So for, um, <coughs> sorry, for the aftermarket parts that you uh, designed, how easy is it to like take them off and put them back on hypothetically? Well, hypothetically, m my idea was like they could be at, made out of like a plasticky like material so that like they could just pop on. It kind of depends on what the car makers would want to do, but the idea is something simple that wouldn't have to be too obstructive and if you want to take it off, you can. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Going to the mirrors question, a uh, uh, number of designers have come up with mirrorless, that is cars without side view mirrors, yes. replacing them with the optical systems. Um, with this model, do you think you could test the effectiveness of simply that modification? Without side view mirrors? Just, I mean, that would be probably destructive to your model. To yeah, it would be interesting to try that. I know that, unfortunately, due to safety reasons, in the, U in the United States, you have to have side view mirrors. Um, I know overseas, like the Volkswagen XL1 actually has no side view mirrors. That's why its drag coefficient is actually so, um, so low. So it would be really interesting to try it just to see um, but I don't know if that's a practical purpose for the United States, unfortunately. Do you have a good idea of like an aftermarket price point um, for your features? Yeah, um, so I just did some analysis on the all air dams at 19%, and that would be about $300 saved if like so, so if features were valued at $200, you could still like save money. Um, but like the front air dam would probably be less than that. Um, this was just a guesstimation. But I wouldn't think that they would be more than $200, any of the features. But that's up to car makers if they decide to do it. Yeah. So like on the full scale model, how much uh, clearance do you have from your aftermarket parts to the ground? For like the underbody? Yeah. Um, that's something that I was thinking about. Honestly, these features were kind of meant for people who commute on the highway with SUVs. So if you want to go off-roading and things like that, buying an under, uh, underbody coverage would probably not be the best, uh, but you could still find drag reductions by incorporating maybe like rubber side, like side air dams so that they could be you know, hit if you go off-roading, something like that. But, yeah. Yeah, since we have time, yeah. you want to show the videos with the FLMA on? Yeah.
I don't know how many of you have seen this. You see it on, on TV uh, for the front spoiler. So this is the front spoiler of the Alfa Romeo uh, Giulia. And so this is like a new technique that they've created in order to um, create like more stability for their vehicles. So it doesn't really have much to do with the drag. It actually increases the drag. But it's just interesting to see how um, that transition happens. In fact, your question, you can have it permanently attached. And yeah. yeah. Most of these features could be deployable um, just because it's easier and there could be just a button that you press. It would be um, simple. Is that all?